Do the Cowboys have to sign Donovan Wilson in free agency this offseason? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Cowboys. Locked on. Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. He is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, we are talking about the Cowboys safeties from today. I want to ask you this question at the very top. Who was their best safety during the 2022 season? Wow, that's a really tough question, you know, uh, and, and, and honestly, the fact that we're even debating this question really shows you kind of where this team has come as far as safety goes. Like it used to be the Cowboys had one decent safety and then just trying to cobble together the rest of the position, uh, you know, amongst the, the whoever you else you've got in the lineup. But now the answer between three players. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I um that's a really tough question. I, I think that despite, you know, not being, I, I, despite probably being the least playmaking uh, of the three, I think that the, the stability and the importance of Malik hooker cannot, cannot be understated. Okay. Uh, because I, I do think that Donovan Wilson and Jerron Jer- curse are, I mean, Wilson is a high variance player. He's going to make a ton of plays. He's probably, you know, and he's, and he's kind of decreased the amount of plays he's giving up, which has made him, you know, obviously a better safety, but he will still give up plays a lot. Curse is in the same way, I think is a steady contributor, but I think that it's hooker who kind of allows them to play that way. Uh, and, and him being healthy and, and playing like over a thousand snaps this year mm-hmm. really opened things up for, for guys like Wilson and hooker to kind of focus on, specifically what they do well which is being in the box being kind of a nickel backer uh all the different you know specialty stuff that that dan quinn asked these guys to do i'll be honest i did not think that's the direction that you were going so let's let's dive into this a little more um according to pro football for focuses war stats so your wins above replacement of the three safeties that you just mentioned donovan wilson uh j ron curse and malik hooker Hooker actually had the lowest war. Mm. However, it was still 12th best in the NFL among safeties. Wow. So what does that wow. tell you about the other two safeties? Like this was by every statistical measure, Malik Hooker's best year of his career. I, I thought he was phenomenal in the run game. He made some plays a- a- as a free safety. So it's hard to disagree. I hook. This was easily the best I've seen Malik Hooker play since his sophomore season at Ohio state. Yeah, I, and I think that, you know, look, I could have easily made an argument for the other two as well. I mean, I, I certainly don't feel so strongly that Hooker is the answer there. Um, and that, again, shows you exactly what the Cowboys have in that kind of three-headed safety role, right? They, they've mm-hmm. got three extremely good safeties, you know, top – I mean, you, you said it, top 12 in all three in, or top 12 in war, right? So mm-hmm. um, at the position. So I think that shows you uh, – you know, not only how valuable they are individually, but I, I think how valuable they are as a collective, especially to the, the entire secondary of, of the Cowboys. And and it's gone from it's crazy. Again, I, we keep bringing it up. But the fact that this has gone from a, stre- a weakness to a strength, I think, really has been uh, as much indicative as to uh the Cowboys vast improvement in defense as, you know, adding Micah Parsons or some of these other things that have happened that have really kind of supercharged the defense. Other than health, what do you think has allowed hooker to kind of take this next step with the Cowboys? Is it just a fit with Dan Quinn? Is it the run defense? Cause that, that was kind of a knock on him coming out of Ohio state. Like this is a free safety. That's a ball Hawk, but not really a run defender. What for you has made hooker such a valuable part of this defense? Well, I think it's the versatility. I mean, I think it's the fact that he has always been, you know, considered that topper free safety. I mean, that's the role that, you know, like you mentioned, that coming out of Ohio State, maybe one of the greatest free safety uh, uh, prospects to mm-hmm. come in, into the draft. I mean, just, I mean, again, his sophomore Ohio State tape is 
the stuff of legends. Yeah. It is like it's it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I mean, I'm a huge Hooker fan from way back. And so, like, I, I remember when he was coming out, like, watching that tape and just – especially, again, for a, for a, t- a guy who's a fan of a team that has long suffered at the yeah. position. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I, we, we watched a lot of prospect safety tape over the last decade, right? Mm-hmm. Hookers is the best. Um, and, and I think that what you saw is he came into the league. He continued to start to deal with some of those injury stuff that he had dealt with, I think, a little bit later at the end of his career at Ohio State. It, mm-hmm. it, it created some setbacks and what it ended up doing is it sapped a lot of his explosion early in his career. So what he had to do was kind of morph his game. And, yes. and, and we've seen this with so many other players and I wish I had a, a great ex- a specific example of this, but you see it over and over these guys who come into the league with elite profiles, they deal with injuries early in their career. It saps them with a cert, uh, of a certain amount of athleticism, and one of two things happen: one, they fall out of the league because they just can't ever recover. They're so they they're so reliant on their um, athletic advantage that that they've had maintained throughout high school and college that once it, it becomes all things being equal, they can't do what they need to do to take their game to the next level to continue continue to succeed or you do what Hooker did, where Hooker became a better run defender. He became he 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 was able to continue to play even with a little bit of that sapped athleticism. He expounded the range of his game. He changed the shape of what type of player he was a little bit. And by the time he's now a year away from Achilles injury, he's a year away from these lower body, these kind of con, con, you know consecutive lower body mm-hmm. injuries that kind of fed into each other. He's got some of that explosiveness back. But he's also got that same brain that had learned to develop the techniques that he had to learn to make him a useful player when he didn't have that explosiveness. And I think that's what's taken his game to like the next level that we all thought we would see from Hooker eventually. I, I think another example would be like the Marcus Lawrence, right? Like Lawrence had several foot, you know, he broke his foot what twice in two years at the beginning of his career. He had a back injury. Remember him coming out of Boise State? He was this long, thin pass rusher that we weren't sure could play on rundowns. And look how he's kind of had to change his <laughs> game over the years. Maybe the best run defender in football right now. Yeah. You know, and, well, and it happens. Yeah, it certainly does. And, and 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 I think it's an interesting career path that you see with some of these guys, right? Um, and I think Hooker is, has really taken this kind of second opportunity with the Cowboys uh, and really, really ran with it. Yeah. All right, let's talk about one of the other safeties that had a monster year, Donovan Wilson. And if the Cowboys have to make him a priority in free agency next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That is bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on anything and everything from money lines to point spreads to the number of three-pointers drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. That is FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, Landon, of the three safeties that we're going to talk about on today's show, you know, of the veteran ones, Donovan Wilson is the one whose contract is set to expire. He's going to become a free agent here in just a few days. Do you think the Cowboys should make Donovan Wilson a priority, and will they? That's a tough question. You know, I mean, again, the thing with Wilson is that it's been a lot of kind of up and down at different points. And I think that what's made him better these last, I don't know, like year and a half, let's say, or kind of is that he's really started to raise the floor on, on the kind of fluctuation between good and bad. Right. Yep. And so yep. um, you don't see him giving up as many big plays. You don't see him, you know, kind of, uh, you know, reaching and grabbing and missing and that sort of thing. I, I think that, you know, for the Cowboys, there's a comfort level here. You know what Donovan Wilson can do. Um, I, I think especially what you see at the end of the year last year is that he was playing his best football. 
Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. and I think that this is maybe of his career. So for, for me, I think the Cowboys should consider going back and getting him simply because I kind of feel like the, the safety market is soft. And I don't I know agree. that like beyond the fact that the, the soft market, I also kind of think that he has a skill set that may not be as valuable to other teams as it is to us, right? Like he isn't, he uh-huh. isn't your, your dynamic. Uh, uh, well, I mean, he is extremely dynamic actually, but he, but the one thing he isn't necessarily uh, fantastic at is coverage. Like he's just uh-huh. not like a cover safety, uh, even in the sense like you would consider hooker or some of these other folks, he is more of a defensive weapon, right? Like he oh, is, I, I, I mean, he had five sacks last year. He hits the quarterback a lot. He has a, he, I think he had something close to 40 stops on defense last year. It was ridiculous. Uh, yep. And, 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 and like, he's just a, a, a def, like an absolute blur in the run game. He's a box safety uh, that they deploy almost kind of, alternately with 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 curse as like an attacking weapon as well mm-hmm. into the pocket so um i don't know that you i don't know that that's like a universal piece that's that's going to have a market in every team you know what i'm saying so his his market not only is the safety market probably pretty soft his market might be pretty soft because of his playing style however for the cowboys he's incredibly valuable yeah like the way that they yep. use him his skill set his role like he has value. So I think the Cowboys should re-sign him simply because, A, I think they should be able to afford it. Um, because I, of- I, I've seen the numbers. Uh, I think PFF has him at like $6 million a year. I've seen some other sites at like 7 or $8 million a year. I mean, when you get to talking about 8 or $9 million, that's where it gets a little dicey. But if it's six and a half, and it's like a two-year $13 million deal, Sign me I'm up all that. day, all day. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the other side of that argument, unfortunately for everyone, well, I mean, not unfortunate, but but is that the Cowboys have a ton of depth at the position they have these young guys. We'll talk about those in a sec, but I do think that, you know, signing another kind of short-term deal. I mean, look, he is 28, 28 years, years old. old. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a two-year deal, putting him at 30 and then like giving him another chance to bite at the apple. I think that's probably when you're like, Good luck to you. Go well, get some yeah, money. you get him at his age 28, age 29 seasons. And then, I mean, I, it's, I mean, just, I'm not saying just to move on, but like, I think you might have Re-evaluate a different idea. That. And yeah. to be honest, you could sign him to a two year deal. And by that time, you'd still have Marquis spell under contract. You'd still have Wanya Thomas, who we're going to talk about a little bit. Like you still have options. Like those guys would still be under contract two years from now. And they'll be two years, two years more developed. So yes. they'll be two yes. more, two years closer to being ready to take that starting role. So, yeah, I, I, I would say that just based on the cost and based on the fact that his market just isn't going to be very good, he could be a very beneficial, low cost sign, a reassigning for the Cowboys. I wouldn't be surprised though if he has a stronger market than we think because maybe I don't know how many safeties are in the league that play with his attitude, his aggressiveness can play in the box. You can play him as a deep safety. If you need him to that, I know that's not his best role, but he's a playmaker. And like you mentioned the stops, he had 40 stops this year. That was second most on the team. He had five sacks, five QB hits, five hurries. Like he just makes a bunch of plays. And as we saw at the end of the year, when he started to really come on, Man, he's just so versatile. You can use him to do so many different things. If you want him to be your nickel linebacker, he can do that. If you want him blitzing off the edge, he's phenomenal. He led all uh, safeties and pressures this year. Like he's basically Jamal Adams, who can stay on the field, right? And then yeah. was it the, the Seahawks gave up two first round picks for that. I I love Donovan Wilson. I I would sign him all day long if the number is somewhat reasonable. Yep, that makes sense. The question is, what's the market going to yeah. look like? And again with safety already being kind of a wonky market because there's so many different body types and player types and style types. And then on top of that, the NFL just cannot make up their mind, whether they think safety is a valuable position or not. Uh, I think it's going to make for a very interesting situation. All right. Let's talk about the other safety in this team. J Ron curse who dealt with some injuries this year. I I don't want to say he played as well as he did in 2021 because I don't think he did. But he was still really, really good. Played beat up all season long. Uh, it, it's hard not to admire what J. Ron Curse has done for this team over the last two years. Yeah, I mean, and and, and you know, 
I think he certainly, despite not playing as good as he did the previous year, he still played very well. Yeah. You know, I think again, that's... number nine graded safety in war, according to PFF this year. Yeah. And so I think, you know, it just kind of shows you the a level, a level of steadiness that you expect. I mean, you know, look, he's going to, the players are going to deal with injury. The question is, can they continue to play at a high level after the injury? And I think he did. I mean, I think he wasn't playing quite to where he was previous, but I mean, again, the, the fact is, is this is a consistently good player and, and, and you've got him for another year. Uh, Curse has got such a very specific role on this team. Yep. I mean, it's it's we're calling him a safety, but he's truly a second level player for the most part. I mean, you could have him drop back if you want to, but uh, honestly, I think that it's you know, especially with the depth and the, the way the the Cowboys play, their three safeties, he's carved out a very specific role. He's very good at it, um, and it's it's uh, a a real chess piece killer for, for, for the Cowboys. It's, it's really good at kind of being able to match up with some of these yep. move tight ends and, and deal with that sort of stuff. So uh, it, it's, it's become a position that is, I think going to become a little bit more trendy than it has been. I mean, I think it's, it's an interesting position, right? It's evolved over time, but yep. now you're starting to see more and more of these kind of, pterodactyl sized safeties playing in the box with long reaches that can run and cover tight ends better than a linebacker can. Um, and, and can uh, you know do some, some deep drops in just some unique kind of pre-snap look stuff uh, if you need them to. So yeah, having a guy like curse on the field and, and, and that versatility, you know, again, paired with hooker paired with Wilson. And, and that's the thing too, uh, like the, the comprehensive look of having all three guys who can do almost anything and then not knowing exactly where everyone is going to fit pre-snap that is like as a 10,000 foot view thing is an incredibly valuable mm -hmm. piece uh, that the Cowboys have in their defense. There are currently three safeties in the NFL that are six foot four or taller. Two of them are on the Dallas Cowboys roster. I was gonna say, yeah, there's only been eight in the NFL, and that includes uh, our guy Pat Watkins, who played for the Cowboys. George Iloka. Uh, is who Kyle was one Hamilton of them. the? Is Kyle, Kyle Hamilton, Hamilton the other, the other one, one in yeah. the NFL okay. right now? Uh, yeah. Remember Obi Melifamu, who was with the yeah, Cowboys of course, yeah. yeah. Is he is he still is he still a safety uh, or I, was he I, he, he I, I, as a corner? It, yeah, I, mean, I think he, he he got drafted as a corner, but really played safety. Yeah, uh, Ken Hamlin was like six three and a half, if you want to count him, but. Uh, we should talk about the other six foot slash yeah. six foot four slash corner safety on the roster. Uh, the guy that we are really intrigued by next. All right, Landon. So we talked about the top three safeties, Malik Hooker, J Ron curse and Donovan Wilson. Those guys combined to play over 3000 snaps on defense last year, which is crazy. However, the Cowboys still have more depth at this possession or position. Uh, let's talk about some of the other safeties on this roster who has you the most excited going into the 2023 offseason well look i mean it's it's no shock I, and i think uh, you know the question that we should be asking is how long before this three-headed monster at safety becomes a four-headed monster mm. at safety mm. because israel mcclamu is a guy that is elevating his game at, at, at a pace that is uh is pretty shocking especially when you look at the way that he played through the playoffs i mean yeah. look he got his best looks and his and he played his best football so far as a pro i think uh you know at, at, in the playoffs which yeah, is I, it really really shows you the kind of uh development this guy has israel came in as a cornerback he you know, obviously played opposite jc horn at south carolina um and and i think that you know you you look at his development and 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 honestly i Let's go back to draft night when he got drafted, right? And and mm -hmm. they announced that he was going to be playing safety. We were all pretty shocked about mm -hmm. it, you know, because first of all, you felt like the Cowboys probably still needed a couple more corners. We weren't exactly sure what was going to happen. We wouldn't have minded having drafted a third corner in that mm -hmm. draft. I don't think anyone would have batted an eye. But I think that, you know, we just didn't consider it. So flash forward to him coming into the game. Uh, you know, on a regular basis, he becomes kind of a, a special teamer uh, his first year. Then he starts getting into the game as a safety on a pretty regular basis. I mean, he, you know, it starts out like some snaps here and there. Uh, then he kind of goes through a period where he's only playing special teams. But then by the end of the year, uh, there was some injuries came around. You know, the, the, the situation with the cornerbacks had developed. Mm -hmm. 
suddenly he had to get thrown out there to play a little bit of cornerback, to play some slot, to move around his nickel. And, and what does he do? He doesn't look lost. He makes plays. He mm -hmm. goes out there and he makes plays. And I think that, you know, that is, uh, you know, something that you, 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 your eyes saucer open for. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of Israel McCombie and his game, his, his athleticism, his profile really profiles well for you know, the kind of position that we've been talking about with Wilson, with curse. He's not quite curse sized. He's, he's probably 10, 15 pounds lighter than, than what you would say is curses, mm -hmm. but he, but he also moves, you know, equivalently faster than curse does. So, um, I, I am really excited about where Izzy's uh, trajectory is headed. I on, honestly would say that if the Cowboys don't sign Wilson, re-sign Wilson, they likely may not go out and look for another third safety. They may just try to you know it, it, go from within, whether that's a combination of Izzy with – bell or or, yep. or or any well, of these guys that's the hard part if you lose wilson you lose a little bit of that physicality yep. in the run game um but is he gives you something different right he gives you more coverage and more length and more size i, I do want to point out like you talked about him playing really well in, in the postseason this is somebody who's played really well in the preseason as well and i know yeah. that doesn't <laughs> matter as much but yeah. i think in two preseasons i think six total games he has four interceptions so like anytime he plays he makes a bunch of plays in the football. Well, and it, it seems like any time that he gets a good, like a 20 to 30 snap share, like that's when he plays really good football. Yeah. Like he needs, I think he yeah. needs to play more. And I, I think agree. that it's going, to, it's only going to help him and the team. So uh, the question becomes like, do you carve out a new role for this guy? Does he end up playing a little bit more slot corner than, than I, mean, I look, they're going to have packages where he, I guarantee you right now, they're going to have packages where he's the slot corner and Bland is playing on the outside yes, and they're doing interesting things with the nickel. I, you know, four safety packages, I, I promise you are coming. They're coming. Yes. So, yeah, I think that he's going to be a guy that not only earned more uh, uh, more playing time next year, but, but may, we'll see how the Wilson situation turns out, but may have earned himself not quite a starting role, but you know, whatever Extended is just beneath time. the starting right. role. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, let's talk about some of the other safeties on the roster. Again, I can't believe that we can legitimately talk about safety five and six in this team and be excited. It's just wild. Uh, I'm trying to think about what the order Tyler Coyle is the, actually mm. the safety that played more snaps than Marquise Bell did last year. Tyler Coyle, this would be going into year three, I believe from him uh, three or four. Kind of yeah. one of these hybrid guys, right? He's a, it was a linebacker at Purdue playing safety. But the first time we saw him against Washington last year, he was playing slot corner. And let's just mention the other guy at the same time, Marquis Bell, the, the, the undrafted free agent that the Cowboys gave a hundred thousand guaranteed to. He was on the roster all year long. He has that size and physicality and athleticism that could potentially replace Donovan Wilson. Which of these two are you more excited about going into the offseason? They're, they're slightly different, right? Will mm -hmm. Marquise Bell is 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 more like uh, Donovan Wilson in the sense that he's kind of similarly sized. Uh, one went to Texas A and M, one went to Florida A and M, so they're both A and M grads. There you go. Uh, uh, they, you know, I th I think their games are kind of similar too, and and I think if you look at the the the, the other side, Tyler Coyle is probably a closer analog to uh, what you would expect from Javon, Javon Curse. He's bigger. Yep. He's he's more in that two fifteen range as opposed to two oh five range. Former linebacker, so he has some skill there. Um, but it, 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 much like Curse, he's a uh, a a big big safety who can run. Like he can yeah. really really or four one as pro day. Yeah. So he, so I think he's not, you know, six, four, like Jerron curse, but in the, he's six, two, he's got that weight to him. He can hit, he's going to be continue to be a special teams demon. I, I would not be shocked if they started to see a little bit more of Tyler Coyle uh, looped into the backup situation when curse comes down. Uh, because I do think mm -hmm. physicality wise, he fits that spot a little bit better than maybe Mukwamu does, or than trying to drop down Malik Hooker into that role, or even Donovan Wilson, to be honest. Uh, I, I think that just like having that extra, you want that position, right? At, at you want at least 210, 215. You're looking for the like the minimum for second level is like right at the line of where Jabril Cox is, right? Like yeah. you want 215 and a half. 
<laughs> exactly. 215 and a half. Anything less than that, I, I think you're playing safety full time. But if you yeah. want to play that second level safety, whatever you're calling it, safety backer, you know, nickel backer, how, whatever the terminology is, I, I think you still got to clear 210 at least. Uh, and that's why I think Coil is probably more of a, and again, like he has experience at linebacker and, yeah. and seeing things from that second level is important because that's part of it is it happens the, fa- the closer you are to the ball, the faster everything happens. So having that e- ability to see things from that level in that experience gives him an advantage when, it, when he has to come in and, and take over for curse. If that's the case, uh, I, I don't want people to forget about Marquis Bell though, either. Cause he's six, uh, six, two, two, 12 and ran a four, four, one at the NFL combine. Like he is a freak athlete who, you knew it was going to take a little bit of time for him to catch up to the, the speed of the NFL. But the fact that he was on the roster all year long, uh, it was in and out of being inactive, just kind of depending on the week, is something to watch out for. And probably the truth is, of these two safeties, whoever can be the better special teamer will probably yeah. be the one that gets a helmet on game day and probably be the guy that ends up being the fourth safety on this roster. Um Really quickly, before we go, we do have yeah. Wanya Thomas, who the Cowboys signed as an undrafted free agent from Georgia Tech. He stayed on the practice squad all year. I don't know how much we can kind of count on him, but somebody I wanted to mention. The other thing is, do you anticipate the Cowboys doing any kind of outside move at safety, whether it's drafting one or signing one in free agency? If Wilson goes, I wouldn't be surprised that they drafted one. Um, but outside of that, if they re-sign Wilson, then – no, yeah, roll it I, back, baby. Like you got a I wouldn't young be surprised group like, of undrafted guys. free agent. Like if they find another yeah, one of these sure. six three guys that can run, like sure. I'm sure they'll continue to just bring those guys in, you know, because they may seem to be the only f- folks who are consistently good at kind of getting something out of these guys. So they may have a whole lane of safeties to themselves that they may just try to pick from the undrafted free agents and see if maybe they can find an upgrade somehow. But yeah. I think that that's they found a lane here, and and I feel like they're good at it, uh, and it may give them an advantage in finding some really talented players in spots that uh, may not cost them very much. I'll give you a name really quickly uh, before we go. I got that. I don't know if the Cowboys like, but I can guarantee you they like him. His name is J. L. Uh, Skinner from Boise State. Doesn't help or doesn't hurt. Right. It's a Boise State safety, six mm-hmm. four two ten, uh, and. He's one of these injury discount guys. He tore his peck in the pre-draft process. Probably no would have been, way. yeah, probably would have been a top 100 pick. Now probably going to be available fifth, sixth round. I mean, I would almost just lock it in at this now, point. Now <laughs> you're, and he's a lifelong Cowboys fan too. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, he hit, he hits the, the 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 full load, right? He's over six foot three safety. Boise State, uh, uh, you know, injured. I mean, yeah, we injured. We just signed Darian Thompson as our as our safety coach. He's gonna be like, hey, this guy's me, <laughs> like, and he's gonna but sign him. So best thing too is, uh, if you go to Pro Football Focus and you look at their draft guide, their their NFL comp for him, J. Ron Curse. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. keep an eye on them. All right. That is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Now make your second listen to Locked On NFL Draft Show. Damian Parsons and Keith Sanchez provide in depth coverage of the biggest NFL dra- draft prospects with deep dives into sleepers, maybe like JL Skinner, and hidden gems that can change your NFL franchise forever. Find Locked On NFL Draft wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, check out the Lockdown Cowboys podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you guys next time.